You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and this is episode 704. And as always, we really thank you, appreciate you, are grateful that you would take a few minutes out of your day to hang out with us on this little podcast. Got a, a good question today. Yeah, a, little, a great question today. We've kind of been going a little bit deeper um, with the last few questions on mapping and so forth. This one maybe is a little more simple, but I don't know. I think a lot of people are out there wondering about this, particularly people who might be thinking about buying a drone and what can they expect from the performance of that drone over time. True, definitely good. But I think it's also important to think about amortizing your equipment. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also important to think about when should you even expect to buy new equipment. So there's really a, there's really a lot that's embedded into this question. So it may not seem deep, but it's deep. It's as deep as you want to make it. Oh, gosh, I just had to refrain from a joke. I'm sorry. Thank you. Well All done. Right. I'm proud of you. Um, uh, this is <laughs> this deep podcast is uh, brought to you by our friends at uh, Energen, who make portable battery chargers for your Phantom, your unique Typhoon H520, or your Mavic Pro or your Mavic Pro Platinum, which, by the way, a lot of people have been asking me, is the Mavic Pro Platinum really that much quieter than a Mavic? And the answer is not really. No. In fact... A unique Typhoon H520 is 8 to 12 decibels quieter than a Mavic Pro Platinum. Is that right? Yep. We actually, you saw that I bought the little... A little tester? A little tester. Doohickey? We, little, we used a little doohickey to see just how <laughs> loud that little drone was, and it was not that loud. Interesting. Yeah. And is that the whole point of that particular yes, Mavic? Yes. That's the whole selling quieter? point. Huh. So... Does it cost more? It does. 100 bucks or something? I think so. Yeah. For a one minute more flight time and a cool paint job. It is a cool paint job. It's like getting the platinum version of the F-150. And you know what? People pay extra for the way something looks all the time. True. That's why I bought those Gucci glasses. Did you? No. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sarah wants a Gucci purse for Christmas, but I was like, hell no, girl. <laughs> so there's this place called the Flea Market. <laughs> Heck, I'll get her a Gucci purse uh, at the flea all market. All right, well, you go get it, and I'll pay you for it. Okay. Make a little, make a little money on the top end there. That's so, right. <laughs> but uh, this podcast is brought to you by our friends at Energen, myenergen.com forward slash shop, where you can buy a portable battery charger that charges up to four batteries uh, at a time. And they actually charge 20% faster than any in-box charger. But also, I haven't talked about this before. There are USB ports where you could literally charge your cell phone 150 times over <laughs> if you didn't nice. charge any drone batteries. <laughs> and if it, you do, you still could charge it plenty I've of times. I've charged four, four drone batteries, extended life Phantom 4 Pro batteries, and I charged my iPod, and I charged my phone, and Jason's iPhone 10, which did, yes, use an adapter, but we charged like at least three or four times each before that thing actually died. So, That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I love this thing. That's why I'm like, yeah, advertising on our show, I'm all about it. Yeah, and you can get a discount if you use these codes. That's right. So use discount code for the A40, which is really the one you should buy. Uh, drone U A40. If you're going to get the P40, which is made just for Phantoms, get the Drone U P40 discount code. Or if you're just going to half-ass the whole thing, just go Drone U M10 for the <laughs> M10 battery charger. You just insist, don't you? Well, it's if you're going to buy a battery charger, you really want to be stuck out on the field when you spend like 200 bucks and you're like, I bought this battery charger, but I can only charge like two batteries off of it. Gotcha. So or I actually gonna, thought, and so the, this is a little embarrassed. Forgive us for going on about this particular charger situation. I thought they were specific to the type of battery you were charging. That's not well, the case. Okay, the M10 is specifically made for the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Pro Platinum, but you could charge four <laughs> Mavic Pro batteries on a Drone U A40. Okay, so you can charge those on the A40. Yes, it does. It is a point. 3S and a 4S battery charger. Right. You just have to switch, flip the, flip, flick the switch. Okay, all right. Yeah, I couldn't say that fast. So enough. spend a couple extra hundred bucks, especially because you're going to get more money off buying that one. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. All right, play the question. Hi, Robin and Paul. This is Tom from AerialDroneMaster.com. I'm calling from Paris, California. It's very, very close to San Diego. Uh, first of all, guys, thank you for all you're doing. You guys are doing a great, great job. 
I have been watching those YouTube uh, videos for a long time and I learned a lot. So I do appreciate it. Thank you guys. And my question is regarding DJI products lifespan. I was wondering if those um, motors, speed controllers, or and other important electronics elements in Jones, do they last forever or they fail or tend to fail after 20, 50, 100 or something hours? The reason I ask, because I have been building uh, racing drones for a few years, and I know that those parts, they are not perfect. Uh, I have seen speed controllers catching fire uh, just because they were not perfect. And um, I have seen motors just um, stop working. So I was just wondering if this um, the same happens with DJI products or they are that good and they just last forever. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tom. Really appreciate the kind words. And I would hope that maybe you've taken a few minutes and gone and done a review for us wherever you listen to the podcast. Definitely would appreciate that. He asked some good questions, though. What is a realistic uh, lifespan of your drone? Rob? Yeah. What? So I love the way he asked the question, do they last forever? No. So optimistic, though. Oh, yes. I love that. I think but they it, do last a long time. I think of it like a cell phone. Well, it also depends on what model, though, because an Inspire 1 will last a lot longer than a Phantom. I've blown through Phantoms. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, after 800 hours, the Phantoms tend to... Well, so... You like that sound effect? I did that with my mouth. Yeah, well done. Well done. I'm sure everybody <laughs> appreciates that. The uh, Phantom 4 Pro that you've been using for a while, I mean, that's held up pretty well. Uh, since getting used last a lot. February, you got to remember when Chad threw the rope on my drone in, um, in, mm-hmm. at the lake. Okay. So it's actually only been around for so not that 10 long. months. But and the, it's time for a new one. Okay. Think about that. No, legitimately. Yeah. So That's maybe a little bit sooner than I would have thought. You also have to factor in how often you fly it. All the time. I mean, the thing's been all over the country and, you know, various parts of Mexico. outside of the country, mm-hmm. Puerto Rico, some mm-hmm. places like that. Bahamas. Did you take it to Puerto Rico? Took it to the Bahamas. Anyways, it's been I around. I did take it to Puerto Rico. That's okay. how I got those sweet, sexy shots that I just got. Yeah, I couldn't remember if that was Mavic Canvas. or Pro. But anyways, um, I took both. Cool. Because one of them is more clandestine than the other one. True. So we won't talk anything more about that. But about clandestine behavior. Right. Anyway, all right. You're, that's a good idea. So back to the lifespan, right? He, I mean, 800 hours. I feel like is legitimate. Um, mm-hmm. I also think it's a time thing. If you're flying all the time, I think it's reasonable to say with a Phantom Line drone, you're probably looking every year to year and a half of getting a new one if you fly all the time. Mm -hmm. If not, that'll probably last two years. As far as the Inspire goes, I've been flying that Inspire for two years and um, the regular Inspire, the Inspire one. Right. And it's just starting to show signs of aging. Um, And it's still an awesome vehicle. I love my Inspire one. I know you do. I am in... I'm in a relationship with that drone. Don't tell Sarah, but uh, we <laughs> love, we love each other. I think she already knows. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Anyway, you're, you're not fooling anybody. Other. But the thing about that, so with the Inspire, you're saying it's sort of getting to that point where it's going to need some work. Are there, is it stuff that you can fix? I mean, that you can replace or is it not really built that um, way? I would definitely replace the motors. Yeah. Um, I think that would definitely help out. But in all honesty... You know, the motors on the gimbal tend to go out as well. If you think about it, the same type of motors that are mm. on, that are propelling the drone, it's just a smaller version of those same motors that are on your gimbal, and they begin to wear out as well. And in all honesty, for me, you know, a lot of people have been like, well, should I just fix my drone or should I just buy a new one? I think, and that's something I want to talk about, I think you should plan to buy a new drone every single year. I mean, how often do you buy a new phone? Well, it depends on who you are. A lot of people I buy them every year. I was going to say that too. I definitely don't, but I understand what you're saying. And mm. certainly people should be putting money aside for new drones probably every year. I think two years is not, I think that's being um, too aggressive. The two year, you mean not buying a drone every two years or buying a drone every two years? I think waiting two years or expecting that you're going to go two years before upgrading is, is your... Comical. It, yes. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Don't wow. you? Yeah. I mean, I know, I, I think everybody out there would agree that in a perfect world, yeah, you could get a drone to last that long. But number one, the manufacturers 
they don't want you to take that long. So they're always coming out with cooler, better stuff. Well, true. And I mean, DJI specifically, but I mean, with the recent reports on the whole, you know, DJI debacle that's going on and some other things that I've been hearing, I mean, we were going to buy an M210, but we haven't stepped in the arena just yet. Right. And um, it's still, you know, probable. But uh, as of right now, I am I want to investigate other options. And by the way, by the time this podcast comes out, Alta or Freefly, excuse me, is coming out with a new drone this week. Ooh. Very excited to hear about what they have coming out because it's supposed to be smaller and more capable hmm. and compete with other drones. So this could be the thing that a lot of people have been waiting for. I mean, really. But yeah, I agree with you. But, you know, back to the point of the, of the conversation, I think you should expect to buy a drone every year. Yeah. If so, you want to stay competitive too. I mean, you haven't even like, we haven't even touched on that point. Right. But, you know, and then in your business plan, you should expect, let's just say 3K minimum every year to purchase new equipment. Absolutely, including batteries and all the other things that go along with purchasing a new drone. Agreed. So definitely, I think, so, and, and the reason, again, Paul's alluded to that just now, but why that's so important is because you do need to be setting aside money to uh, pay for these new drones. I don't know, unless you just have um, business rolling in and you don't think you're going to need to worry about it. That's fine. Great for you. But I think most folks should really be planning on that and putting away a, a little bit of money every month. Yeah, I agree 100%. I'm so. just looking at it that way. I would be. Yeah, I think it's really important to do that. I mean, that's the whole point of amortizing, right? It is. In fact, that's what we do. I say I would be. We do. Oh, really? <laughs> How much do we save every month? Uh, well, we, I think we do it a little bit differently where we just have a function of the amount of money that comes in. There's a percentage of that that gets set aside for those kinds of things. Oh. So it's not specific to drones per se, but that's included in what that money is to be used for. Cool. I'll take a new alt eight then. Denied. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I'm, I'm guessing you haven't seen is one of the ESCs blowing up, starting a fire on a Phantom. I have seen that. On a Phantom? No. Not on Phantom. You guys got to understand the quality of parts that DJI uses is actually significantly better than most of the stuff you see for FPV racing. Exactly. That's kind of the point I was trying to make there. Oh, well, I just, well, you're Good welcome. Good job. Good job. Thank you for <laughs> making it actually happen. <laughs> uh, I think we learned that too in the build class with building a drone. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that's, you know, really, uh, really important to, to take note on. And you know, I think the ESCs will go out before the motors because I've seen those motors last a very long time. Yeah. So that lasts a long, long time. So, Tom, I think you can expect your DJI drones and probably your unique drone, if you get one of those, whatever, those, those kinds of electronics and motors, they're going to last you a while. Yeah, definitely. I think that's really important. So Certainly relative to the FPV stuff that you've been doing all these years. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us today. Um, just want to say a special thank you uh, to our friend Kyle Reek, who uh, helped us fix a buddy's drone, sent it back to Laguna Beach for him, and he'll be uh, he'll be sponsoring the show here pretty soon. So very happy uh, for his service. He he fixes drones, and you guys are going to be hearing all about him in the short coming days. Absolutely. So, yeah, he's a good guy. He is. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.